I'm going to share a true story of this paranormal activity with me and my friend. My hair is supposed to be perfect. And you might think it's Dorothy. <laughs> well, with a higher pitch, I of course, you know, I'm a guy. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tom and look at my outfit today. Isn't that awesome? I want to be a Wolverine, but I don't have that costume and I don't know how to make a full beard. So I decided to just put makeup on and see how it is. And I guess this is a dog costume? Loser. Today I'm eating. So Kana gave me this gift uh, for his October box. And uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this. Everything is in Korean. And uh, apparently it's called Powdled Bibimmen, if I pronounce it right. I guess it's eating dry noodle maybe? And they come with a hot sauce. Apparently these spicy sauces are very spicy. But he also gave me this. It's a Samyang spicy sauce. So I might just end up using it if it's not spicy. I got cheese too. So I am going to put it in so the cheese can melt before I start. I know I'm gonna regret this. Wearing a furry costume. Ah! For this mukbang. Because going to get really hot if this is spicy. Ooh. Ooh. It looks kind of spicy. Yeah, it's kind of spicy. How do you guys like my beer? I'm thinking about like getting a transplant because I can't grow a beer like this. I'm so kidding. I'm not getting a transplant. I don't make enough for that. Ah. Ooh. Okay, so the sauce is a little bit sweet and kind of spicy. You can see my nose is starts sweating already, so am I doing this right? I got a bad feeling about this. So once again, thanks Canna's World for giving me this opportunity to eat this Korean dry noodle that I don't even know the name of it. My pronunciation is probably not even going to be close to what it's supposed to sound like. So leave a comment below of see how I can pronounce it properly. I might just end up asking Stephanie Sue. I have water, just in case if it gets really spicy. Oh my God, my hair. My hair is supposed to be perfect. Anyway, okay. Let's dig in before we get into our topic of the day. Mm. Mm. I like it. I like the sweetness of it. Mm. Cheese. Mm. 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 Yeah, guys, I'm regretting it already. It's getting really hot in this furry costume. Okay, guess what? Oh, I have to open this. Oh, oh, I guess it wasn't spicy enough for me. No, it's not. But I'm going to pour this in. Ooh. Let's spice things up. Because you know why? Today's topic is going to be very spicy. I'm going to share a true story of this paranormal activity with me and my friend. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, I'm sweating, guys. I'm sweating already. Oh, this is spicy, actually. Mmm. 
But I like it. <coughs> Makes you feel like you want to eat more, you know? Like you can't stop. Eventually. So the story I'm about to share with you is by the name of Landy. She was a close friend of mine when I was in college. And, but she was studying college in Taiwan while I was in U.S. Um, we were growing up together, so, you know, we still kept in touch after I moved. She was able to see ghosts, and uh, she had that body of being able to attract paranormal activities around her. Maybe that's why I'm also very attractive to her. Aww. I'm kidding. Uh. This is just so spicy. I don't know if I can finish this story. And her body usually gets really weak. So that's when the ghost will harass her. I mean, in case you don't believe this, I'm just, it's just a story I'm sharing with you guys for Halloween, okay? Um, and every time when she gets sick, she will stay home because she doesn't want to go out. Because, you know, she'll get harassed by ghosts. This is the second year of college. And we were both studying final. I guess, you know, final in Taiwan is about the same time as final in U.S. And, you know, when you study finals, you don't sleep, you know, you, you try to stay up late to study as much as possible. So your body, your energy gets weakened. In this case, Landy one day, she fainted. And she was in the hospital for a day. She was staying at an apartment near her college. Immediately when she got home, she called me and said she was bothered by something and she doesn't feel well. So I told her, maybe she should just go to the temple or something, you know, <clears throat> or we'll find someone to help you. Maybe give you the, you know how uh, we call it Fu Zhou. It's like the paper that has a writing on there that to protect you. You know, maybe you should get some enhancement in the house because you don't want the ghost to go into your house, right? So she said she couldn't leave the house. And then I told her to just call up some friends to maybe to give her something like that. And luckily, there were a friend that was able to get something for her, the Fuzhou, to her, so she can stay home and rest. The people in the temple tell her to hang on four corners of her apartment. And she did. The first night, because she went to a hospital in the morning, and when she got home, she called me, it was at night in the U.S., so I must be able to talk to her, right? Her friend dropped off the food, and she hung up everything to every corner, and then she, she felt really weak, so she took a nap. While she was taking the nap, she heard this clicking sound on the floor. It was like a, a sequence of tapping, like. And it, the sound was getting closer and closer to her bed. Now let's talk about the configuration of her apartment. It's not too big, but her bed is right next to a window and uh, there's a long hallway. She lived by a small alley. It's normal in Taiwan. There's a lot of small alley, and then the hallway can't even fit in a car. So she's in the middle of a whole street, and then the window, when you look outside, you can see all the first floor, because she lived on the second floor. You can see all the first floor and all the small houses along 
the street. This is crucial. So she hear the step, and that's when she woke up. She didn't see anything. She just felt really weird because now she already hunt all the food. She was like, "Is there something that's bothering her right now?" But she couldn't see it. Is that because the food was protecting her? But she still could hear the sound. That makes it really weird for her. So she texts me and say, "Hey, I heard things." And so I told her, "You know, it's okay if now you know the food is already protecting you. I'm sure you should be okay. Just rest well and get better." That night, the step came back. As the sound gets closer, she start to panic. She couldn't see anything, but she can starting to resonate the sound with heels, like someone's wearing high heels, and then walking closer to her. She start freaking out. She felt like. That might be just a woman walking towards her, right? When the sound gets closer to her bed, it stops, and nothing happened after that. That was the first day. Her body gets weaker. She decided not to get up the bed at all because she couldn't even walk outside of her room. So, she texts me again and she say, you know, she felt it was. Someone wearing heels walking towards her bed, and I was like, "Huh? You know, it's okay. It's maybe ask your friend to bring something from the temple again because you're feeling things still." So she did. Her friend brought a little pocket, you know, like the the little pocket that you get from the temple to kind of put in right next to your bed, or、um, you can just wear it. So she wore it, and the second night. She heard the sound again. This time, when she was laying in bed, she just turned her head to the side. She saw red heels, and you might think it's Dorothy, but honestly, trust me, this is not a Dorothy story. This is not Wizard of Oz, okay? She saw two red heels clicking and walking towards her. She's starting to panic, and then now she's hearing something even behind the heels. A、uh, something that's moving along the click. It felt like something is dragging behind the heels. She felt like it must be a woman. And then dragging something, and she texts me again and saying, "You're hearing things, and this time even more amplified." So I told her, "Yeah, that's crazy, but hang tight, cause、uh, you know I'm sure it's not doing you any harm. Because if it happens on the first day, you would have, you'd have, you would have already been whatever, you know. Like I don't know what ghosts would do, like torturing her or I don't know." And apparently, because she's so freaking out, she did not eat any food on the first day or the second day. So it could also be something that, since she's not eating, so she's messing up her head with this kind of paranormal activities. I guess I don't know. I'm not a witch doctor or anything, guys. On the third day, she finally saw her feet. She saw a woman wearing a white gown and red shoes, dragging a duffel bag behind her, a huge duffel bag behind her, and slowly dragging towards her bed. This time, she had to say something, right? She she start to、uh, chant. 
to see if the bad spirit can go away. So in the beginning, she can only see the below the knee. So she could still see the long gown, the long white gown. And as she starts chanting, she can slowly see the woman from the bottom to the top. And now she's, she was able to see her chest and she saw the woman was dragging something with two of her hands behind her. And this huge duffel bag has things moving in there. She started freaking out. She just, she started to cry. And this is when she called me and I told her, you know, take a deep breath. I'm with you. And just don't, don't, don't look, don't look anymore. Just close your eyes and starting to chant. I'll chant with her. So I just, I can't really chant for crap, okay? So I just keep saying the whatever she's saying. So I just did it with her. I did it with her. And slowly, the, the woman just disappeared. That's the third day, you know? Like, it started getting real. And now I told her she have to get out of her house or else she, you know, something might happen to her. You don't know. This is kind of scary. It, this is like a very bad demon that's going to hunt her down. And not the food, not the protecting pockets will help her to save her. And I'm not there. So, you know, I couldn't help her or even her friend. She She's freaking out. She couldn't even... On the up uh, after the third day, her friend didn't even want to go into her house. That's how scary that is. So, I told her get out of the house right now. Just get up, right? And she said she'll try. On the fourth day of the morning. Her whole body was paralyzed. Her body could not move anymore. Like she felt like something is stopping her from moving the whole entire day. She was chanting the whole time. She was crying, but nothing makes her move. And finally, as the day goes to dark, probably around six o'clock or so. I don't know. She didn't tell me like an actual time, but. The, this time, she heard a sound again. Also the dragon. And as soon as the woman walked towards the bed, she was looking towards the direction of the window. And she's not looking at her. And she's starting to hear like very creepy growing sound from the duffel bag. And so now, of course she's panicked, but she's paralyzed, so she couldn't do anything. And she could only change in her mind. And after a 30 minutes or so, cause she couldn't even look at her clock, so she doesn't know what's happening. But she says it felt like a 30 minute or so. There's the firefighter sirens that's going off that she could hear from the window. And She's starting to hear people just start screaming outside the window of something like, get out of here, get out of here now. And then some people start calling out fire, fire. And she realized there's a fire that's a few houses down from her apartment. And this is where the woman was staring at. And as soon as she, as soon as Landy got that thought, she was able to move again and get up and look at the window because now she, you know, what if the fire comes towards her? So she, I don't know, the survival instincts made her to just get up and then look out the window. The fire truck cannot come into the alley because it's just that it's too small. And she literally saw the whole entire house burn down. And then the ghost behind her, you hear her just smiling and giggling like <laughs> well with a higher pitch i of course you know i'm a guy and as soon as she heard that she turned her head back 
she only saw a lot of hands that's pushing the duffel bag. And slowly, the whole entire duffel bag and the woman fade away. And that's the story, by the way. I mean, that's the ghost story that my friend was sharing after she woke up and after she saw, saw the whole incident and then she called me and freaking out, crying and going all crazy about this. I hope I did not scare you, but it is the Halloween month. So, you know, this kind of paranormal activities happens all the time. And uh, just don't be afraid about it. And I'll be open. Please like and subscribe and hit that notification button. And if you want me to talk more about the paranormal activities that you experience, please let me know. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.